Good afternoon. Welcome to the September 11, 2018 Glendale Housing Authority meeting being called to order at 3.06 p.m. May I please have the roll call? Authority Member Devine. Here. Garpetian. Here. Najarian. Here. Parazian. Here. Sinanian. Here. Chair Agajanian. Present. May I have your report? The agenda for the September 11, 2018 regular meeting of the Glendale Housing Authority was posted on Thursday, September 6, 2018 on the bulletin board outside City Hall and at 64 Rami <laughs> Street, apartment 62, Yerevan, Armenia, 0007. What's next, please? 4A would be approval minutes, minutes of regular Housing Authority meeting of August 28, 2018. Is there a motion to approve the minutes? I'll move 4A. Second. Second. Okay. Hearing no objections, the minutes stand approved as submitted. What is next, please? Five would be oral communications. There are no cards submitted at this time. Next would be six, business agenda. 6A, Director of Community Service and Parks regarding submission of Glendale Homeless Continuum of Care COC funding application to the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development HUD under the 2018 COC program competition and City of Glendale Homeless Count and Survey Report. 6A1, Housing Authority motion approving the 2018 Homeless COC Program priorities authorizing the City Manager, Executive Director to submit an application to HUD on behalf of the Glendale Homeless COC under the 2018 COC Program co competition and authorizing the City Manager, Executive Director to execute all relevant documents with HUD and sub-recipient services providers related to the 2019-2020 COC programs. Two would be housing authority motion to note and file the City of Glendale 2018 homeless count and survey report. Who is presenting the report? Yes, uh, authority, chair members of the authority, uh, Yvette Somelian, our community services manager, will uh, go through a presentation on this item, please. Thank you, good afternoon. Uh, my members of the Glenda Housing Authority, Chair Agajanian, City Staff, Yvette Sambalian. Um, today I'm here before you to ask approval for the submission of the 2018 Homeless Continuum of Care funding application, which is a national application that the City of Glenda applies on behalf of the um, Community Services and Parks Department to the federal government housing, urban, and development. Since 1995, City of Glendale has been designated as the one of the continuum of cares within the um, county to apply for the federal funding. We are one of the three cities uh, continuum of cares within Lhasa, Pasadena, and Long Beach. The continuum of care funding application um, is a competitive application. The awards support the existing continuum of care programs part of the application. City of Glendale, Glendale Housing Authority is the lead applicant on behalf of the funding source, and our nonprofit organizations are the sponsors for the continuum of care programming. This particular application um, will be in the submission of $2.6 million, uh, which is due to HUD on or before September 14th. The various components part of the continuum of care funding applications include permanent housing, or permanent supportive housing, rapid rehousing programs, which are short-term subsidy programs or rental assistance programs for our, our uh, homeless folks and individuals, street outreach and coordinated entry to the system, which is our intake and, assen intake and assessment system operated by Asensia in the city of Glendale, housing rapid rehousing component, which is operated by Family Promise of Verdugos, homeless prevention and emergency shelters. Page three of the, um, of the council report has the details of the specifics associated to the entire continuum of care and all the services provided within the city of Glendale. Part of the continuum of care, city of Glendale, um, uh, city of Glendale serves about 2,500 homeless persons any, any time throughout the year. Uh, from that perspective, we have two emergency shelters in the city of Glendale, one operated through Essentia, 40 bed and a second one through YWCA of Glendale, which is domestic violence service providers. We have transitional housing and permanent supportive housing projects, part of this continuum of care application. 
Um, at the time when the funding availability is announced, our Continuum of Care Board of Directors uh, meet to determine the needs of the priority and, and the priorities based on the HUD funding priority requirements. And currently we have Lieutenant John Gilkerson from Glendale Police Department, who is the chair of the Glendale Board of Continuum of Care, Diana Hill from the Glendale School District, Bruce Nelson from the hospital, Gary Brooks, a formerly homeless participant who is actually in housing and doing well. We have Gabrielle Waring and Melissa Unesian. So the board members all are comprised of specific, unique sub uh, sec sub categories that are that must represent the subpopulation within the continuum of care. Um, part of the funding application that I discussed already is is scored and the board members interviewed the 15 applicants or the proposals that submitted the funding applications. And based on local and federal priorities, those applications were ranked and tiered in, with regards to HUD's criteria. The scoring criteria was based on the agency's ability to follow the housing first model, which is placing clients into housing from the streets, um, implementation of um, increasing income and um, employment, ending chronic homeless status for veterans, youth, and families. Um, one of the requirements of the uh, regulations and this funding source, again, is to allocate a portion of funding within Tier 1 and a portion of funding within Tier 2. So of the $2.26 million, uh, HUD has directed Continuum of Cares to allocate 94% of the funding in Tier 1, which guarantees funding for all the projects. Any projects that are allocated in Tier 2 of the funding application is a potential that it may not get funded. However, because City of Glendale has been um, implementing successful homeless programs, it is likely that most of our projects will be funded between Tier 1 and 2. Particularly, we have 12 renewal projects. We have one new permanent supportive housing project for chronically homeless, which pays for rental subsidy and case management that we will be submitting part of this application. A second um, permanent supportive housing project that serves the domestic violence families or victims of domestic violence families, and then one continuum of care planning project. So in this particular slide nine, it indicates what our proportions will be the permanent housing bonus uh, project and the, uh, the continuum of care planning dollars and the general permanent housing bonus. Those projects are not ranked or tiered. There are brand new dollars that we're competing for the first time this time around. Therefore, our total application will be about $2.69 million. Um, I will uh, forgo the RFP process. It's a typical process that we follow through the city, city system. Um, this is this another slide which re represents which particular project has been ranked in what priority. Basically, the top projects have been ranked as the highest priority, and since we don't have a poor performing project, it just went down to the availability of funding levels in terms of what, was, what will be submitted to the federal government. Specifically, um, with, the, with this funding, there's a portion of it that's allocated to the nonprofits, and the nonprofits that will be running the programs are Essencia, Sa uh, Salvation Army, Family Promise of Verdugos, and then the Glendale Housing Authority will be operating the Shelter Plus Care Project, um, and Essencia provides the case management as a leverage to those programs for the continuum of care. And so that's how the, the funding, the fiscal impact works within our continuum. So at this time, um, staff is um, respectfully asking for Housing Authority to approve the funding recommendations and submit the application to the federal government. But I also would like to take a moment and go quickly go over the 2018 homeless count results, which is one of the requirements, part of this application and part of running a continuum of care. So annually, the um, HUD requires that the continuum of cares run, um, go out to the community, identify how many homeless persons they have in their city of Glendale. This is a major effort that's done through volunteers, existing nonprofit organizations. The point in time count is one night in the month of January, 
And so within that one night, I'm gonna go to the specific details real quickly. We had identified 260 homeless persons in the city of Glendale. That's just within that one night. And this is a um, slight increase from our previous fiscal year in terms of homeless folks experiencing um, homelessness in our community. Um, some of the key findings associated to the increased number in the homeless count results to uh, I, Proposition 47 and 57 that allows early release of individuals to, to the systems. Um, second aspect of uh, the increase in the homeless population is typically due to working with the city of LA, coordinating with the encampments within the neighboring communities. As a result of cleaning out the encampments, we have some additional homeless clients in our community, as well as, um, I'm sorry, was there? Yes, excuse me. Yes. When you say you found like 260 homeless, did you cover the entire city? You guys went everywhere to find the homeless people? Yeah, th thank you. How it uh, works. Chair Agajanian, yes, the outreach teams go out to the entire city of Glendale for the night and the evening, and there's over 10 outreach teams comprised of five people. Uh, so they encompass the entire city of Glendale where we can identify homeless clients and go through an actual survey of questions and ask them to participate um, willingly so that we can develop programs that are gapping the community. And so just that one night, we identified 260 persons. However, this is not the total number of persons that the continuum part of these funding sources serves within Glendale, and that's about 2,500 unduplicated homeless persons are served through all the continuum of care programs within the Glendale. So in, during the four hours, you covered the entire city? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, so I'm quickly gonna uh, skip some of the specific data and go through, and the, and the details of the homeless count results was all attached part of the application. But what I would like to quickly discuss with regards to the homeless count and, and what next steps w is in terms of what we need to do as a continuum to successfully compete for this funding is that we need to prioritize housing for the unsheltered and the chronically homeless individuals um, and some of the uh, process of uh, ways of doing that is, is either developing affordable housing or, or working to identify landlords who are interested in working with the continuum of care and working to master lease some of their units to the city in order to be able to have housing units availability for the programs and the homeless participants. A um, couple of the recommendations that we will be submitting to the federal government include finishing the job of ending vet veterans homelessness in the city of Glendale. Uh, we actually had a functional zero of ending veterans homelessness in 2016, and unfortunately we had newly uh, folks that are experiencing homeless in the city last year when we enumerated the homeless count. Um, recommendation two will be including um, basically to have zero tolerance of having anyone that has children on the streets living in their cars. As a result, from our 2017 homeless count, we had 33 homeless families in their cars, and due to the implementation of the rapid rehousing and some of the coordinated intake between Ascensia and Family Promise, all the 33 households have been placed in, in housing currently and are doing well. And so during 28 homeless count, we did not find any families that were in their cars or on the streets. And so the goal would be continue to align with that policy, specifically um, to end family homelessness. And then, um, Recommendation number three, which is a continuous recommendation, is to implement the housing first model uh, that which requires coordination between Essencia Outreach Team, the Glendale Police Department Outreach Team, and Mental Health Services, the housing vouchers, along with always looking for new landlords who are interested in partnering with the city in ending homelessness. Um, recommendation four would be ending homelessness among women by 2020, that is a HUD requirement. And so one of the way City of Glendale is addressing this this year is the new domestic violence project that we are applying for will be um, serving uh, women and their children fleeing domestic violence. And then finally, recommendation five would be um, working closely with the Glendale Police Department and the jail discharge to make sure folks that are being discharged from the systems are quickly um, entering our homeless programs and um, services. 
So in conclusion, at this time, city staff is respectfully requesting your approval on the submission of the 2018 homeless, ca homeless application to the federal government. We do have executive director and acting ex executive director from Ascension Family Promise and Salvation Army, um, if you have any questions for them, and, um, and also to note and file the 2018 homeless count report. And if you have any question that questions right now, I would be happy to answer them. Any question? Yes. Uh, so you said this application is due on September 14th? Yes, sir. Do we have enough time? It's yes. like two days left. Yes, the staff who are here that I want to actually recognize, Ida Babayan, Renya Gazarian, Marissa Herzberg, they all have been working tirelessly along with our nonprofit agencies submitting the applications and the proposals and the board met and approved all the proposed applications. The final stages of this is approving this today, then we're um, able to upload our application to the system from the, from the approval from Housing Authority and then do final edits for the submission of 914. And after submittal, how long does it take to get the funding? Typically, within two, we, um, I apologize, two months, we, are, we receive our conditional awards. The first project would be implementing for this would be April of 2019. So we have a little bit of time. Okay. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Any other questions? Yes, question. thank you. Um, I have a question about the Salvation Army, and you mentioned they have a four-unit project. Can someone describe that to me, where it is, when this is happening, and? Sure. Uh, thank you, Authority Member Devine. The Chester Street Permanent Supportive Housing Project is operated by Salvation Army. This serves four families who are um, in the, subs they are recovering from sub substance abuse programming. And the families are referred through the substance abuse centers or Essentia, and families are placed in Glendale. So it's a, it's a building that Salvation Army invested in back in 2004, purchased, and, and so operations dollars are supporting the program. And um, the families ultimately become independent and move on from this programming, mostly through getting employment and keeping, um, and not relapsing and ke keeping uh, their sobriety and working through the process of becoming self-sufficient and independent. And so those are four families that are served through the program. Thank you, thank you. Uh, another question on um, the vets, uh, increase in the number of homeless vets. Uh, do you have an, a number of, um, of the increase and why? Are they coming from LA? Are they actual Glendale residents? Um, can, what kind of information can you give me? Us? Um. Authority Member Devine, with regards to the veterans population on page 21 of the report, okay. we had identified um, four first-time homeless veterans this year during our homeless count, um, and nine of them became, so a total of 12 were identified as, as homeless, four were brand new to homelessness, and nine w became homeless in the city of Glendale. So nine out of the 12 were ho are homeless in the city of Glendale. And the idea is for the new permanent supportive housing project would be um, tied to the veterans subpopulation so we can coordinate with them. And the second um, priority with the veterans is for us to continue to work with the veterans administration. They have some VASH vouchers, essentially it runs the same way as section eight for us to be able to get those vouchers to city of Glendale and support um, the subsidy for our veterans. Do you find them service resistant? Um, uh, they're not really service to resistance. The VA system is a little bit complicated to maneuver through the systems. Thus, we do require a, a case manager who can walk our clients through the system because sometimes they're not self-sufficient enough to be able to understand where to go for services or complete their paperwork. If a case manager t takes that client through steps A through Z, then they're successfully placed and typically we rely heavily on our homeless outreach team with Essencia to help us with that transfer and that support. Um, I've been, and I don't know if my colleagues are in the same position, been uh, getting emails about uh, 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 homeless uh, in our parks, libraries, et cetera. Uh, what I'd like um, to request is uh, for uh, you to uh, supply us uh, with a report on the city ordinances, um, strategies, uh, that we use on um, or can use because I know we're we're bound by certain legal um, uh, 
laws. And uh, so if you can just give us, uh, provide a short report on how we handle uh, those people, the resident, the homeless that are in our parks, in our libraries, what we can do, and just kind of thinking outside the box, if there's any way that we can uh, do more. I'll be happy to come back with a report okay. soon. Otherwise, I think this is a great report, and uh, I think that uh, uh, from what I uh, talked to uh, some of the, um, the, the CEOs of the nonprofits, they're very happy with it. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Devine. Uh, I have a question. In the report, it reads, the city of Glendale is one of only three cities in the county of Los Angeles that operates its own homeless system. Besides Glendale is Pasadena and Long Beach. And we know that there are 88 cities in county of Los Angeles. Is this something that we are doing good or we shouldn't get involved? Apparently we are doing it. So it's in to our benefit. Um, thank you, Chair Gajanian. The um, city of Glendale Continuum of Care is a successful continuum and it does benefit to have our homeless programs for the city. Um, the reason why we're one of the three eligible continuums is because we are making successful changes in, in getting people off the streets to services and to housing. And so is along with Pasadena and Long Beach. Um, if we were to combine with the Los Angeles Homeless Services Authority, LASA, the service delivery system wouldn't be as quick or as, uh, as um, that we wouldn't achieve the outcomes as, as the way we are in terms of City of Glendale does ha and has been since the inception of funding in 1995. And so it benefits the community um, and having our own continuum of care. Okay, and last year we had 168 homeless and this year we have 260. What happened? Do you know how this came about? Yes, so the increase is, is, there's three factors to the increase of the unsheltered population. One of the factors is that city of Los Angeles's implementation of the encampments within the neighboring community, Eagle Rock and Glendale and LA neighboring communities. So anytime we're um, working with the population to um, in, clear the encampments, the population are unsheltered, and so they come out to the next available city or available resources. That's one of the factors. The second factors of, of, of that is that we had 22% of our homeless persons enumerated this year were discharged from institution, and that's due to the Prop 47 and 57 for the early release and re resentencing of the inmates. And, and as a result, it's, it's why city is implementing strategy five to be able to coordinate and work with our Glendale Police Department and the jail discharge system to be able to get the clients from systems to services and housing. And then finally, a slight um, population dealing with the rental market statewide, um, in fact, nationwide, with the rents increasing and, and lack there of affordable housing within nation um, is, a, is the biggest challenge. Also, one question, my last question is, the administrative dollars associated for the city cover approximately 25% of overall administrative cost. So, we get 25% of it, the balance of it, city of Glendale pays for that administrative cost, right? Um, Chair Agajanian, so the fund, uh, of the $2.6 million, it, there's about $200,000 that's available for administrative allocation between the city and the agencies. Some of that funding is used to run the programs. Additional funding through our HMIS funding, Homeless Management Information Systems Project, pays for staffing. However, a city does support a portion of homeless services delivery system. For example, recently we've implemented the landlord incentive program, which general funds have paid to support and incentivize landlords to be able to allow their units to be used for homeless services. So in a sense, general funds support to provide a small incentive to landlords who have to work with a special population with a lot of background challenges and working with addressing the needs in the community. So that's an, an area where general funds has supported the homeless services systems along with a homeless outreach person that helps coordinate between city of Glendale's Asensia staff and our Glendale Police Department. Thank you. 
Chair, uh, again, you know, yes, Mayor Tineo, Mayor have you been fairly question. successful with that incentive program with landlords? Have you gotten more apartments Hello? for them? Uh, thank, that's a great question. Thank you. Yes, actually, we've added about 25 new units in our inventory since the implementation of the landlord incentive, and that's from 17-18 fiscal year. Um, about 80% of them are in our community and 20% outside of our community that work with us, but also expanded their units that's not in the city of Glendale. So that has helped giving new um, owners a little bit of incentive to work with the staff and programs and our clients um, to be able to end homelessness. And that would be a help to Family Promise because they're basically located Burbank, Glendale. So those sites are, are very valuable to them. Yes, the landlord incentive is available to all of the programs. It's coordinated Hello. through the city of Glendale, but that funding is available to all of the uh, agencies and the clients that are part of our programs that are looking for units and are getting placed. Thank you for the report. I have a question. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, First of all, I want to thank you for detailed uh, report. Then I have a question. So uh, on the section second, uh, on page two, back, background ground analysis, it says, uh, are they in homeless population due to that fleeing the domestic violence? And if there is, uh, is the number large? They are, they are in large numbers. I apologize, Ms. Papazian. Is your question regarding youth homeless? Yes. Okay, so based on our homeless count, we did not identify any youth that are, eight, that are un, um, accompanied between ages of 18 to 24. However, we did have some families that have children that are at our emergency shelter programs or our transitional housing programs, and we're working with them, but not unsheltered. Thank you very much. <coughs> Thank you Hello, for the question. What's next, please? Uh, we Arbitrary. Need to you need a motion? Move the, uh, move the item. Uh, we take them both at the, the same time. I'm late. Never heard motion is called. I'd like to uh, note that I am. Hello. Party member Sinanyan uh, can hear us now in Armenia, uh, and he can respond from his end over there. Uh, Chair, uh, authority member Sinanyan. Yes, I. I've been on the whole time and I did the roll call and I've been trying to say something and I, no one hears me. Can you uh, hear me? We're having some technical difficulties. Okay. He can hear us, but we can't hear him. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the roll call. Or who would like to move it first? I'll make the, I'll, I'll make the motion. I'll second. Hold on. I still don't understand if they can hear me or not. Sorry, Member Devine? Yes. Garbetian? Yes. Najarian? Yes. Parazian? Yes. Sinanian? Chair Agajanian. Yes. So, what's next, please? Next, next would be authority member and staff comments. No comments. Okay. So, roll call. Be adjourned. Move to adjourn. Second. Okay. Uh,